Hello, this is the Bluther Upright Piano made in 1924, about 130 centimetres tall, which we've uh, just got into stock and started working on. I have made another video of this, contrasting it with the Beckstein Model 8, um, which I'll link to. But the reason I'm making this video again is because we have done some polishing work. I, I mentioned the top of the piano, and in that video you can see the top of the piano uh, where it was defective and I said we can we can improve it not not perfect it if I run my hand along here if you look at the other video you'll see that we haven't perfected this corner bit here um, if you're not able to come in and look at the piano I want you to be aware of that uh, but we have perfected um, a lot of the case where my colleagues spent a couple of hours just uh, improving it really it was already good if you look at the other video but now it's uh, any defects any uh, around here for instance have all been taken away and on the front rail that was um quite defective as well if you look at the other video still a small defect here that we haven't been able to get rid of so it's not perfect the sides are pretty perfect but i will take it round the case as we're talking about the whole case and then i want to look at a couple of technical things to do with the piano as well and there's the other side of the piano it has been refinished at some stage and very nicely refinished too and just a quick look at the pedals they're a bit on the high side um, about two centimeters higher I think it's about eight centimetres from the floor. Should be six or less, really. Um, generally, pianos are six, five centimetres. And I think the casters are a bit tall on here, so we'd like to replace those, to bring the piano down. It already has uh, four centimetres more legroom than, say, a U1 upright or even a 4X. It's got three centimetres more legroom here. So if we took it down by two centimetres, that would still give it more legroom um, than uh, the most pianos. When the pedals are too high, it's, uh, the angle is a bit too great on the foot, so that's why I want to take it down. Here's the Beckstein 8 that we contrasted with. That's a much more comfortable height, about two centimetres lower. Now, whenever we get one of these very special Blutner upright pianos in, which we believe have the world's best piano action ever made and uh, up for uprights, so just want to show it each time and encourage manufacturers. I uh, can't really see why... It would obviously take a lot of setting up to get it like this. I'll show you in a second, but first of all, you might notice I've taken already taken off the action supports here. Sorry, I mean these uh, nuts on, on the action supports are all taken off, and the action still sits very comfortably. You won't find that on any other piano, and you can even lift the dampers off, and the action doesn't move at all. You could regulate the action, and it's staying in place. You can pull the action forward. We'll just look at that in a second. Now, before we do, there's a model of a standard action, standard upright action in uh, practically all, or if all, all modern pianos. And uh, we can see the damper lifting off here. Now, what I want you to look at is this, this is represents the string. Um, so the damper's attached to the rest of the action. So this is in one piece. You take all this off together if you want to get the action out. Now, on the blue, so once you've got the these uh, nuts, uh, off then you just lift and the dampers stay on the springs and as a technician I just love to see that because you can get at the spoons here very easily you can get at the the damper springs the damper wire everything is so easy to to regulate even uh, these screws here are much easier to take off so look at the standard action again so everything's difficult to get at um, well, most things are. A spoon at the back here, you also get used to regulating them. Um, you have to have a tool to go th through there. You take the action out and, and adjust the spoon. Uh, it, it can be done, and you can adjust the damper wire here, but it's all it's all more difficult to do than it is on this blute nut. Now, I have shown this for and shown the need to regulate the dampers lifting off uh, with, first of all, with the, um, with the string. Let's just have a look at that first. So you pull the action out there and we can see the damper's lifting off with this, to the pedal. Sorry, um, and they're lifting off around here more or less together. But as we move down, I want you to see that the base is lifting off a bit later. So, sorry, a bit earlier. So if I press the pedal gently now, you can see the base one's lifting off. And these ones are not lifting off. So the base ones are coming off first. And that has an effect on the regulation and the touch. So if they're lifting off too early, let's compare with the middle here, say like this one here, lifting off reasonably late, possibly a bit too late here actually. Um, 
so we have to adjust that. And as we go down, damper's lifting off late. If they're too early, they're too heavy. And also, if they're too early in the base, and let's have a look at one or two here. So this is bottom C. Lifting off too early, really. Make it, and that's C-sharp even earlier. And makes it feel heavier because the spring's quite heavy. Now, these springs are uh, deliberately heavy. You need them to be strong to dampen off properly. In the treble, they're, they're lighter. They're thinner springs. Um, but if you did want to regulate the spring, obviously you can do that too, if you want it to be stronger or weaker. Uh, that's the beauty of this action. On the upright action, this model looks quite easy to get at, but these hammers are right next to each other, so you can't normally get at the spring so easily to adjust it. Here's a new euphoric, for instance, and uh, typical, these are all the actions like this, Yamaha and so on. And there's, you can see the spring at the back there, and there's no way of getting at it without taking the action out. So on the bluthner, we just pull the action forward, adjust the springs as we need, as we want to, make them stronger or weaker if they're too strong. In the middle, sometimes that might be the, or the top treble, that might be the case. They might be having too much effect on the touch. I'm going to do something else here though. This is a, a damper wire adjuster. We can, you can, you could bend them without using the tool, but if you bend them at the top, they tend to obviously get out. They, they might be that the top there then hits less than the bottom of the damper so you really need this tool and you put this tool on the on the wire here like this and then bend it backwards or forwards so we want these to come off later so we're going to have to bend them towards the string now i've actually done the bottom one here so you might see that that one's coming off uh, a little bit later it doesn't show very much actually on the video but it is a bit later let's have a look at the, it on the regulation so as I press the key down on, on this one now, it's coming off about half, hammer gets halfway to the string, lamper lifts off. As we mentioned before, that's really what we're looking for. A third to two thirds, but halfway is the normal one to aim for. And that one there, that's um, A sharp, B flat is earlier. And this one's earlier still. This is the B, this is the C. I see not too bad. So. That one is early, that's C sharp, and that's D, that's very early. So it does feel heavier to play. And also, obviously, if the damper comes back earlier, we'll tend to damper quick, more quickly, and that's really important for the bass area, areas, particularly. So I won't be playing this piano, as I've played it on the previous video of, that's contrasting to the Beckstein Model 8 upright, but just very briefly. Thank you very much for listening.